know, uh, deliverance is almost a dirty word in some churches. Uh, people think, oh, well, they're looking after, looking for demons uh, just about everywhere. And, and uh, when, many years ago, when I was director of King Challenge, I had, um, uh, as part of our duties, we went round all high schools, so there were lots of them in New South Wales, um, preaching to students and uh, ex-drug addicts, giving testimonies and things like this, and, uh, uh, and also ministering in the churches that hosted us. And uh, it was the people that were right in the inner circle of the church that came to the, the seminars we, where we shared about uh, drug addiction and all that sort of thing. And uh, I, I came to realize uh, that there must be at least 60% of uh, these people in the church that need some sort of deliverance. Because judging by the people that came forward when they were convicted by the Holy Spirit, that's about what it would be. And I shared with some ministers to the seminar, and uh, some of them came forward and they said, well, we thoroughly disagree with, uh, with what you said. <laughs> but I did see the twinkle in the, uh, their eye, uh, and one of them, that is the spokesman for the other, said, we reckon it's nearer 80%. <laughs> so, <laughs> I reckon that's about right. And uh, the thing is that, um, you know, people are just compromising with sin in their life. But if you're in bondage, it's one of the things you simply cannot afford to do. I'd just like to read this to you from uh, Luke chapter 1, and it's the, uh, the prophecy of Zechariah. And, uh, you know, after he'd been done for so long, and he popped up and said this, it must have really stood him back. Um, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, um, for he has visited and redeemed his people and raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. As he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets from of old, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember, to, and remember his holy covenant, the oath which he swore to our father Abraham, to grant that we, being delivered from the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And, uh, you, you, you know, uh, holiness is, uh, is God's strategy uh, to keep us out of the hands of the devil. Uh, that's why his law is essentially a law of life. And uh, where I remember uh, the, the people at King's Cross who were in the drug scene, they were about the filthiest people that I ever came across uh, in physical terms uh, uh, as well as spiritual terms. Because uh, just as cleanliness is next to godliness, uh, uncleanliness is next to ungodliness. And when we had somebody who was slipping back into trouble in, in a spiritual way, in the community uh, which we lived, uh, you could always tell it because the toilet was messed up and uh, you know, there was somebody <coughs> developing filthy habits. And it was the uncleanness of what was inside of them. And, you know, it, it's hard work ministering deliverance to people because you've got to find out <coughs> why. Uh, the, the demon got in in the first place and then lead the person into repentance and then command the thing to be gone, having been taken away its legal right. But the person has to stay free of that demon. And I've so often warned people, uh, uh, and I think I'm right in saying this from my experience over many years, look, that spirit, that demon that's just come out of you is going to stalk you and it's going to walk behind you like a shadow. And it's going to wait until the circumstances pop up in your life when you're tempted again. And uh, what are you going to do with the temptation? That's the point. Because if you fall into that temptation again, that thing will come right back into you. Uh, 
I uh, was ministering to a young doctor once, and uh, uh, he had an unclean spirit. And he said, it's not good in my profession. He said, I'm out of control in a certain area of my life, and I know that I must deal with it or I'll end up in a stack of trouble. And uh, uh, anyway, I, he repented and he went on his way, and I warned him that way. Uh, but about three weeks later, he rang me up uh, from a public telephone booth in a city miles away. And he said, he was in tears, and he said, that thing came back. And I, I said, well, I can't uh, promise deliverance to you. I don't know what God is going to do. I mean, I can <coughs> command a demon to go from you. And, uh, and I said, it might be of no avail at all. It depends on the Holy Spirit. Um, and, and God is looking on your heart. And I said, and that's what counts. Uh, well, he was greatly repentant. So I said, well, I'll, uh, I'll lead you in a word of, of prayer. And uh, he had a deliverance in the phone booth. And, uh, you know, I thank God for that. But he said, well, you know, I was in a hospital waiting room. And, and I just picked up a book and I just thought, oh, I'm free now. And uh, there was some... Uh, unclean pictures in the thing of naked women and whatever. And uh, before you could snap your finger, that thing was back inside. And so, you know, what are we going to do with these temptations? Well, you know, God has made special provision because we don't want these guys to come back because there's always somebody else who wants deliverance. So when you, if you're going to hold on to your deliverance, God has uh, given us uh, two promises in the scriptures. And one is in 1 Corinthians 10, verse 13. Uh, there is no temptation that has come upon you which is not common to man. Uh, but God is faithful and will, with the temptation, he will make a way of escape that you may be able to endure the temptation. And so uh, you call on God, to, on the Lord Jesus Christ to enable you to endure the temptation. And... It's not just uh, in terms of, of deliverance and demons and so on, but if you've, if, you've got a, if you've had a healing, it's exactly the same way because um, it's so easy to uh, fall uh, into uh, some negative attitude, like even stress um, or, um, or, or tension or... Um, negative thoughts, depression, despair, hopelessness. You know, if we entertain these things in our minds, then Satan comes upon us and he's only doing what we're doing. But if we've been healed of it and we've been set free, uh, then uh, the Bible says this in Hebrews chapter 4, uh, verse 14 to 16. And this is an extremely valuable uh, promise that God has given us. And when Jesus uh, suffered in the temptation in the wilderness, he was tempted in every way such as we were, even in sexual areas. I mean, he wasn't made of wood. He was a man the same as we are. And uh, not only that, he had women knocking about everywhere. And uh, um, he just had to be on his guard. And he did withstand temptations that were far greater than anything you and I can ever think of. And that's why this word uh, is such a, a wonderful promise to us, so that we latch on to it as soon as we come into uh, the place of temptation. Since then we have a, a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our confession. For we have not a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect, uh, in every respect, uh, has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. And the very act of enduring the temptation, and I warn these people, I say, now look, uh, the first time that temptation comes upon you, 
Don't give him whatever you do because the first occasion you must get victory over it. I don't care if your hair catches on fire and steam comes out of your ears. You do not, under any circumstances, give in. Yeah. Because as soon as you do, you've had it. Uh, and I said, be comforted because the temptation will come again. But you have crucified the flesh. And so therefore it only has half the power that it did at first. And, and so on, and the power of the temptation is gradually broken. And so we are being conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. Because this is what our destiny is, we're meant to look like Jesus. Amen. We're meant to walk in holiness and righteousness. And we're, we should understand that we're involved in the most tremendous depth of spiritual warfare, especially in this day and age. And you can't serve two masters. You must have full control of your life under Jesus uh, if you're going to get anywhere with him. And uh, uh, it's a matter of practicalities if, if we really want to see the power of the Holy Spirit yeah, he's holy. Uh, if we want to see the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And so God does discipline us. 